what's going on internet world I'm on my way to do a quick uh, supply run for a job that I'm gonna have to do and then I'm gonna hit the gym I'm still doing the cardio uh, so far uh, and this week I have actually dropped about 10 pounds probably a lot of water weight uh, once I get, uh, get once I get down to Once I hold exactly 200, I'll start bulking back up again. I'm just, I don't want to be that, that like, bigger guy and then, like, still have a gut, you know, coming out. I'm trying to, trying to keep this, you know, down as much as I can. If I could end up with abs, that would be fucking phenomenal. So, yeah, now the gym even sucks even more. I prefer lifting weights than I do cardio, but I, uh... I'll pull about a mile and a half on an elliptical sometimes too, depending on how good I'm feeling. I'll do 100 leg lifts, and then I go and I just do 100 push-ups. That way the cardio doesn't eat away at, you know, a little bit of progress that I've made on my arms. So, that's that's what I'm doing uh, today. But I, I just got to thinking about that last video that I uploaded where I, uh, without beating around the bush, I said, fuck DEF. And I, and I mean that. I hate that crap. It's it's just, it's not a good system. It's, it's really not a good system. I understand trying to make things cleaner, burn cleaner, okay? I get it. I just, I don't think that the, the implementation of these fucking laws that are in place is achieving that goal. You know, it... It, it, it trickles down into, you know, people fully believe that driving a battery-powered vehicle is better for the environment than just driving a Honda Civic. That's not the case. Lithium fields are bad for the environment, and you still have to charge these batteries. Where is the power at your house coming from? Where is the power to charge your Tesla coming from at the sheet station? It's coming from fossil fuels. So all you're doing is, okay, so you're, you are not emitting going up the road. Something else has emitted greenhouse gases in order for you to turn your wheels. That's it. There, there's no way around it. You've got your wind power and your solar power and stuff. And frankly, yeah, in some areas it works. But again, it's not it's, it's not the end-all, be-all solution to the issue. Honestly, I think nuclear is probably the best way to go. Nuclear is scary, though, because you do have a byproduct from nuclear power. So, here, here's an idea that I think everybody needs to understand. So, if, let's say you're a vegan, and you are a vegan because you believe killing animals is wrong. Okay, ask yourself this question. And no, I'm, this is not my thunder that I came up with, okay? It's, it's something that I never thought of, and from now on, anybody talks to me about a vegan diet, I'm going to ask them this question. Is the life of a cow equal to, less than, or greater than the life of a mouse? Of a rabbit? Of, any, of anything like that? So if you're driving through rural areas where farming is big and you'll see the tractors plowing the land churning up the ground chopping it up you will see vultures and you will see crows okay they are not there to eat dirt they are there to eat the mass amount of animals that are killed for planting plants okay here is a fact in order for us to survive to eat animals are going to die more animals by number not size obviously die planting stuff than it does for like if you take one cow one cow processed can feed i don't know 100 people maybe more that's one cow one mouse dies 
and it doesn't even take up or occupy the that, that carcass doesn't even take up the space that it, it's less space for one corn stalk to be coming up so I don't know if I said that right but the point is is in order for us to eat and survive animals are going to die right in order for us to live in a modern society drive a vehicle have the amenities that we are all used to air conditioning heating you log in on your computer or you record a video or you watch TikTok. greenhouse gases was emitted and for the foreseeable future will always be emitted for all of the amenities that we have today all of them there's no way around it it is the best source of energy that we have today is there ways of cleaning that up a little bit yes trying to get I don't know I would honestly say that if you for instance with a diesel truck take the de the def system completely off and now the truck is able to obtain 15 miles to the gallon or so instead of nine i would say that's a good fucking way to go less fossil fuels and again i, I cannot and i cannot stress this enough i see it every single day and if you drive on an interstate you will too if you pay attention learn what a diesel vehicle looks like and when it's blowing smoke it's the regen process now black smoke different fucking story that means they put a chip in it okay um unless it's an older vehicle and like some of your older tractor trailers every time they would shift a gear you poof poof you would see a little bit of a puff of smoke all right, so cleaning up a little bit of the black smoke, okay, cool, I can kind of get behind that, but not at the cost of fuel efficiency, not at the cost of loss of horsepower, not at the cost of it costing so much money to maintain these things, so much. <coughs> so something else that I found when I was talking to Bobcat up here in Manassas when I dropped the machine off, okay, Here's the thing. <clears throat> there is a computer software out there that can be obtained that you can do what is called a delete of that system to a piece of equipment. It'll make it run better and it won't have to utilize the DEF system. You can make it be like it was supposed to be. A diesel burning engine with one catalytic converter and you go about your fucking day. Sounds great, right? Okay. If the DEF system is just not working for you, go for it. A couple thousand dollars, delete, boom. You got yourself a badass machine, right? Okay. Don't get caught. It could be a $50,000 fine. That is correct. Now, 15, 50, five, zero, 50, thousand dollar fine if you get caught doing it also when i was informed at bobcat it's like okay yeah you can do it and yeah it's going to improve the machine it's going to improve it by a lot by a lot they will not no longer be able to work on it so if there is something within the bobcat system that has to be repaired I can't take it to any dealership because they can get fined $50,000 just for turning a wrench on it. Think about that. Think about that for a second. So, I, I don't even know if I want to call the EPA government because they're not elected, but obviously they have power so fuck it they're the, they're a government agency they are the government unelected bureaucrats that know nothing about anything there is some epa requirements that we can all kind of agree that makes sense that makes sense that makes sense okay this is one of those ones <clears throat> i'm like what the fuck 
So I believe it was all part of the Clean Air Act of 2009. So we all know who we can all blame for this fucking horse shit. Okay? So that created a standard. Here is the system in which to have it abide by the standard. I've seen the studies. I have seen the statements. And I am going to tell you, as a man who follows behind trucks, drives them for a living, and utilizes the machines, that those numbers cannot be accurate. They can't be. So in a dual catalytic converter system, one catalytic converter is there to collect the soot that would otherwise slowly be burned off during the running of this machine. Okay? Or the running of your truck. Anything. And then, when temperatures are right and the soot is filled, at that point, the computer instructs the motor to do a fuel dump to raise the temperature to burn it off. It still burns it off. It still burns it off. So it's not doing anything other than costing contractors and small time businesses even just more money and more money. Not to mention the fuel economy, the absolute fuel economy that you lose in utilizing the system. I think I said it in the other video, like when you're trying to build a campfire, if you don't have airflow, you don't have fire. The DEF system restricts the flow. It restricts, the motor has to fucking breathe. It restricts that. So therefore, it has to, it, it drinks fuel. I have a tier, what would that be, a tier two machine? Yeah, I think it's a tier two. It's a, it's a uh, Bobcat Excavator uh, it's a E35. It's, it's a power of a horse for what she is. She, she does some really cool things. She does not have the horsepower that requires the DEF system. I, if I fill it up on a Monday and I use it every single day, eight hours, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and Friday, maybe, depending on what I'm doing, maybe on Thursday I might have to fill it back up. But more than likely on Friday. That skid steer, it burns a tank of fuel. A whole tank of fuel in like eight hours. And the, 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 the motor is not much different than the E35. It's a little bit heavier, yes. But we are, we are talking about a discrepancy that makes no other sense other than the DEF system. And again, it's a fossil fuel. It's something that cannot be replicated. How is that better? When it's still going to burn the shit off. It's still going to burn all of that. All of that emissions it's saved still gets burned off. And it's drinking more fuel. I just, it, it makes no sense when you think about it from a logical perspective. These fucking pencil pushing geeks come up with something that looks good on paper have I dare them so so like with uh, with my bobcat I don't have there's a switch that I probably should have um, my machine didn't come with it but let's just say I'm utilizing this uh, machine in a parking garage there's a switch that I can cancel the regeneration process if it's not a safe environment for it to do so and let me tell you a parking garage not a safe environment for a fucking regen tell you that right now. So if it starts to regen and, and puff its smoke and I don't have the ability to turn it off, anybody on that ground floor right there, you're going to choke. You're going to choke. You may not survive. It's, it's not a pleasant smell and it is not good. It's not. And again, I'm not. I'm not saying that it was. It would be even be, You know, any better to have that piece of equipment that you know is constantly burning a little bit, 
Uh, but but at least it's like you, you can run it for a little while, shut her down, run it for a little while, shut her down. If if my machine starts a regen process, mm, better look out, guys. It's not gonna be pretty. And again, it's all EPA regulated shit. And I'm not even gonna claim to be. I'm not a mechanic, okay? I'm not an expert on everything. In my line of work, I trickle down a whole bunch of different avenues in order to get the job done, all right? There is such thing as common sense. And what I'm reading on paper, what I'm reading from, you know, from the EPA and, and from the lawmakers about systems like this, when I actually see it utilized in real life with my eyes and with common sense, doesn't make sense. None of it. None of it. The power that the EPA has to be able to charge an individual $50,000. $50,000. Think about that. If I want to make my machine better, I could be charged $50,000. Stupid. It is absolutely fucking stupid. That whole thing needs to be 100% repealed. I don't know if that would fall. I don't know what government agency or what what elected official, what politician, I guess I should say, not government agency. I don't even know who that would fall on. It does seem that California has a lot of pull with some of the emission standards. And again, I, I can't stress this enough either. So geological location actually makes a difference as well. So the type of environment that California is the regulations that they have there may make sense for them, but it would not make sense for us here on the East Coast because we have a different environment. It, it I, I, I'm not a, I'm not a uh, meteorologist, whatever. I, I don't know, not a climate expert, but <clears throat> there is a huge, huge difference between the actual climate of California than there is to Virginia. So there is a smog in LA. I've seen it with my own eyes. It's pretty bad. Very, very, very populated. Very populated. Um, so, yeah. Maybe some of these crazy things make sense for them. But again. It's not changing anything with the diesels. It's not. It, it, it's just. They're still emitting. They're still emitting. I. I. I stand by the notion, and I know I've said this before, and I'll say it again. We need to find ourselves to be very careful. I'm guilty of it, too. Whenever I see something stupid, be very, very careful that man, there should be a law against that. Because then more stupid people are going to come in and to try to fix a simple problem. And again, I'm not saying emissions are simple. They're not. But... Just bear with me for a second. A whole bunch of pencil-pushing geeks, college-educated individuals in the liberal arts are going to come together and they are going to write a thousand-page document over something simple. Simple. Whenever there is a law created, all that does is, yes, maybe it was created in good faith. Maybe the policy... It's like, okay, guys, that this is something that needs to be fixed. But when the government comes in to fix it, they make it worse. They make it more expensive and just downright non logistic just the logistics of keeping it running smoothly goes out the fucking window. They flip the shit upside down. They're not good at anything government run programs are honestly they're just not good they're just not good at anything I don't know I I just I cannot get over the fact that the EPA has that amount of fucking power 
and they're not even elected. We don't even really get a say. They just, they fart something out in the wind and they say, yep, catch that. That's it. It's done. I don't know. It makes no sense to me. I love y'all.